With football season upon us now, there's a lot happening in the news. So be sure to subscribe to my other channel, JG9 News, where I give you up-to-the-minute updates on everything happening in the NFL in a completely relaxed, unscripted format. And I get my thoughts on everything taking place around the National Football League today. And now, on with our feature presentation. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. All right, glad we got that out of the way for no reason whatsoever. Anyways, September 2nd, 2024. It's week one of the college football season, and we find ourselves at the Dilk down in Tallahassee for this ACC battle and this home opener between the Florida State Seminoles and the Boston College Eagles in what is the only game on this Labor Day. For Florida State, it feels crazy to say that a game in week one is a must-win game, but here, it absolutely applies. The Seminoles played the week before in Ireland and lost on a walk-off field goal to Georgia Tech. So not only do the Seminoles already have a loss under their belt, but they had a conference loss too. Lose this game and drop to 0-2, with two losses in conference play making it near impossible for you to make it to the ACC Championship and play for the right to be crowned the champions of the conference you're suing, and your chances of making it to the college football playoff are slim to none. Safe to say, Florida State has to win this one. No questions asked, they need to get the win. And to say that this scheme did not go according to plan for the Seminoles to start would be putting it lightly. Thanks to some awful defense initially, where they couldn't get off the field and couldn't defend a wheel route by a running back to save their life, three straight offensive drives that went for no first downs, a point in the game by the second quarter where Boston College had 90% of the possession, and an abysmal performance by DJU at quarterback, with him being unable to hit water if he was a passenger on the Titanic, along with some other receivers having visited Willy Wonka's Butter Factory during their time in Ireland, the Seminoles found themselves down 14-6 to start off the third quarter. After their first drive to start the quarter goes nowhere, just like most of the other drives they've had, they're faced with 4th and 5 inside their own territory. So naturally, they pump the ball away and try to flip the field and pin Boston College deep to get a stop and get the... Wow, in a one-possession game, going for it on 4th down. You're, uh, you're, 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 you're going for it. Inside your own territory. With 28 minutes left in the game. Down by one score? When your quarterback has been crap, and your receivers have been crap, and your offensive line has been crap, and when a turnover on downs basically guarantees the fact that this will become a two-score game, and you'll be even more screwed than you already are? I already know how this one's going to end, but okay. Let's see what the heck you've got. Not a hard cap. A sidearm lob, and it's intercepted! Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Before I break down what happened here, this whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something look bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something look awful almost immediately. These are moves where your gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this can possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of a college head coach. And for this one, we're going to take a look at the mind of Florida State head coach Mike Norvell. Really? Mike Norvell? If you told me that someone was going to do something stupid on fourth down in a game involving Bill O'Brien, considering what happened the last time Bill O'Brien coached in a national game of this magnitude when he was with the Texans against the Chiefs in the 2019 divisional round, I would have bet my non-existent mortgage on Bill O'Brien to be the one screwing up. Not Mike Norvell. And Norvell coached a really bad game on so many levels. It was as though Florida State had never seen a wheel route in their life. There was a moment in the fourth quarter where the Seminoles were punting the ball and took as much time off the clock as possible to do so, because for some reason, they decided that it was a good idea to show no urgency whatsoever, even though they were trailing and were giving the ball back. But of all the dumb decisions and of all the dumb coaching moves that Mike Norvell made, this one had to be the worst. This one had to be, by far, the worst of the bunch. I will never understand why Mike Norvell went for it on fourth down here, because it truly made no sense whatsoever. So with that being said, let's take a look like going for it on fourth and five in your own territory down by one score at the start of the third quarter is a really bad idea. 
Let's look at the alternative, which is what happens if you punt the football. In all likelihood, with the way your punter, Alex Mastermano, was punting the ball, you're going to get off a good punt. Your punter was one of the only players to actually show up and ball out. Because tight end Kyle Morlock didn't show up. I know that much. He averaged over 52 yards per punt on the day. I'm not going to assume a 52-yard punt here, because from the 47-yard line, that would be a perfect punt. and would mean that Boston College is starting inside the one. And that's very unrealistic. But let's assume that it's a good punt, and the Eagles are starting the drive at their own 10-yard line. This means that in order for the Eagles to make it a two-score game again, which is obviously the last thing that you want to have happen, the Eagles need to drive about 60 yards down the field. And was there anything over the course of the game to suggest that Boston College could do that? Honestly, with the way the game was going, was there anything to suggest that this was going to happen? Because at this point in time, your defense was playing well. Yes, the first three drives were an embarrassment, where it looked as though you had never seen a wheel route in your life. But once you made the adjustments and started covering the wheel route, Boston College got nothing going offensively. Thomas Castellanos wasn't doing anything with his arm or wasn't doing anything special. He saw the wheel routes being covered on the last few drives, then scrambled all the way outside and took off and barely got yarded. It was one read to the running back, and if he was covered, that was it. In fact, on your last three drives before this one, you allowed no first downs and just 14 yards. The passing game had negative one yard on those plays. Boston College had no answers for your defense at this juncture. In other words, will you score if you punt the ball away? Obviously not, but guess what? In all likelihood, neither will the opposition. You get to keep it at a one-score game, and you get a chance to flip the field and maybe take over with good field position yourself. Seeing as three of your six points thus far came on a drive with a super short field, following a bad long snap and an even worse punt. You might end up starting the next drive with a new set of downs at or near midfield, and still only down by one score. Which is a good thing. Now, let's see what happens if you decide to do whatever the heck Mike Norvell did. Which was, go for it in your own territory on 4th and 5 with the way your offense was playing, and the way your defense was playing as of late. The best case scenario is that you move the sticks and get the first down. And obviously, that's a good thing. But your odds of doing that are marginal at best with the way everything has gone. Your quarterback was 10 for 24 and had completed less than 42% of his passes. Your quarterback was playing like crap, and that might be an insult to crap. If you want analytics, here are some analytics for you. There was a 2-5 chance based on how the game had gone so far that your quarterback was going to complete this pass. And even in that 2-5, that doesn't guarantee the fact that it goes for 5 yards minimum. This means there is a 3-5 chance that either lands in the hands of a Boston College defender or results in a turnover on downs because the pass falls incomplete. And it's even greater than that when you consider the possibility that the pass is completed but not for a first down. So already, you're working with pretty awful odds, and you're going to take that chance inside your own territory down by one score with 28 minutes left in the game in a fourth and medium situation instead of just pinning the opposition deep? Because here's the deal. If you don't get this first down, Boston College, despite having done nothing offensively over the last 15 minutes, will get the ball in plus territory. And even if you get a stop, they're still going to be in field goal range. And that's assuming no turnover that goes for a huge play like we eventually saw with the interception. That just assumes a regular old stop. Even if your defense does its job, you still might be down two scores through no fault of their own due to the field position they were dealt with and the crap hand they were giving. You trusted your incompetent offense in its own territory when it did not have even so much as a first down an hour before to pick up a first down in a tough spot for any team, let alone a team like you guys. And when if it failed, you'd basically be guaranteed to go down by two scores. And you did this at a point in the game where there was still plenty of time left considering you were down by one score and would have gotten at least five or six more possessions to cut into the deficit with a favorable down and distance and maybe even a favorable piece of field position. It just doesn't make sense. And obviously, 
I'm not saying that no team should ever go for a 4th and 5 in their own territory. I'm not saying that. If that's your takeaway from this, you completely missed the point. If you have a defense that is playing like absolute crap, where you have more faith in your offense to get 5 yards than you do in your defense to get a stop, then you go for it. If there are 2 minutes left in the game, and you're trailing, and you only have one timeout, yes, you go for it. If it's a 3 score game late in the 3rd quarter, and you're on the losing end, then yes, you go for it. But with 28 minutes left in the game, and the game is a 1 score game, under these circumstances with how crap your offense has been, far too early, and far too stupid. If there were 13 minutes left in the 4th quarter, I wouldn't agree with it. With 13 minutes left in the 3rd? Absolutely moronic. And I know what the number one argument in favor of Mike Norvell is going to be here. I just know it. The analytics said to go for it. God bless the analytics. So because they said to go for it, it makes sense to go for it. And you're only looking at this from the perspective of it being hindsight bias. Because it can't go against the analytics. I mean, Mike Norvell justified his decision after the game by talking about the analytics. And by saying that he made the right call because the analytics told him to do so. Take a listen. On the, uh, on the fourth down, on the first drive of the second half, uh, I guess maybe go into the thinking of going for it there, and was DJ just trying to make a play because he was feeling pressure? What was the breakdown on the play? Yeah, that was right. I mean, it was right at the brink of, um, you know, just you know, analytically, you know, thought to go. Um, you know, we've, we've had success, you know, in some of those fourth down situations, you know, um, you know obviously, um, you know, we got a little bit, you know, they got a little bit of pressure. Um, you know, obviously tried to, tried to, uh, to force a ball. Um, you know, came out, came out uh, you know, poorly, and uh, you know, obviously was a was a big big play in the game. And you know, in those in those situations, you know, you you, you try to play to put your guys in a position to to go achieve success. We knew, you know, we, you know we're trying to spark some momentum, trying to spark uh, uh, an opportunity. Um, you know. But obviously, it was a it was a bad bad uh, d decision in that regards, especially you know carrying the uh, uh, with with the result of the play, you know turning the ball over and giving them a short field. But um, you know definitely uh, it's something that you know was thought through, felt you know you know in all aspects of what we what we needed analytically, what I thought would would occur on the play uh, was was confident in it, but uh, definitely was not the result. And look here, he's one hundred percent right. The analytics clearly say that FSU should go for it here. So you're just wrong. And this wasn't really a dumb decision. And you've got egg on your face right now. And to that I say, hogwash. Complete and utter hogwash. Analytics are a tool in your toolbox. But that doesn't mean that you should use the analytics and solely rely on them. They can be a great tool when used properly, and a really crappy tool when not. It's like an actual toolbox. A power drill can be an amazing tool, but that doesn't mean that you rely only on your power drill and just start drilling a hole in the middle of your water pipe if a screw is loose. There has never, not once, been a time in the history of the game where it has been smart to go for it at the start of the third quarter, well within your own territory, down by one score in that spot. Fourth and one? Yes, but fourth and five, where success is not likely, where your quarterback is played like crap, we still need to go 25 or so yards after that to get into field goal range. And when a turnover on downs will give the other team the ball with good enough field position, where it basically guarantees the fact that it will be a two-score game? Nope, you can't convince me otherwise. Just because you write an American history test and put the answer to the question, who was the first president of the United States on the answer key as Ronald McDonald, doesn't make it the right answer. And if you honestly think that ESPN analytics are a good tool to use, Midway through the fourth quarter, they said that instead of punting the ball away or going for it, Mike Norvell should try a 57-yard field goal, which is almost impossible at the collegiate level to turn a two-score game into a two-score game and go from 28-13 to 28-16, even though failure to convert the fourth down will result in the ball at the 39-yard line for Boston College, while failure to make the field goal will result in the ball at the 46 or thereabouts. So the best case scenario is worse, and the worst case scenario is worse. I'm not saying that analytics are inherently bad and don't have their place. Believe me, I'm the furthest thing from that. I hate the old heads that say analytics as a nutshell are awful. But saying to trust the analytics 
is such an all-encompassing statement, and it should be a tool. Nothing more, nothing less. So no, I don't care that the analytics say that Mike Norvell was 100% right to go for it in that spot, and that it was the right idea but the wrong execution. He was not. He was most definitely not. Considering everything about the game, it would have been a dumb move even if he made it, and it would have been a dumb move if he didn't get it. And the fact that he didn't get it, and the game basically ended on that play, shows off how awful that play truly was. So what do we learn from all this? If you think that going for it in your own territory on fourth and medium, two minutes into the third quarter, down by one score, is a good idea, to the point where even Detroit Lions head coach Dan Campbell himself would tell you to pump the brakes, then maybe you shouldn't be a college head coach. If you think that you should make a panic move down by one score 20 minutes to go, and you think that's a smart play, then maybe you shouldn't be a college head coach. If you think that giving your defense a short field off a high-risk play when the opposing offense hadn't done anything as of late and would set up the offense would have had to drive the length of the field otherwise to make it a two-score game and really put the pressure on you guys, then maybe you shouldn't be a college head coach. And if you think that it's a good idea to go for on a fourth and medium in a tough spot when your offense has shown no signs of confidence the entire game, then maybe you shouldn't be a college head coach. Because when all these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this play backfires. Talk about a dumb decision. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.